I recently participated in a sculpture show, the largest juried sculpture show in the US, Sculpture in the Park in Loveland, Colorado, and I felt embarrassed about some of the sculptures that I brought to the show, and it's not for the reason that you might think. I wanted to talk about it. I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. I'm an online sculpting instructor and a YouTuber. I like to think that I have a fairly good understanding of the human form and how to represent that in three dimensions. And of course, I'm always trying to improve and get a little bit better, and there's always a lot more to learn. But up to this point, I haven't really invested the time and effort to translate the figurative knowledge that I've been trying to gain and trying to help people understand into stone. Most of my stone sculptures, which is what I brought to this show, are abstract, very simplified, stylized, and I tell people I think of them as gesture studies, which I do, that's true. They are like little gesture studies, like a sketch, a quick sketch you might do of a gesture and then turning that into a sculpture, having some fun with the forms and line work. And so here are some of the examples of some of the sculptures that I brought to the show. And you might think, well, these are nice looking sculptures. They were good enough to get me into the show. The show's juried, so you have to apply, and then they only allow in a certain number of sculptors. So it's kind of a big deal to make it into the show. So while these were handsome looking sculptures, I like to think, I like to think they were okay and that the finish was nice on them. I worked hard on them. They're nice looking, they're fine. But then I had an experience, a couple of experiences that made me think, you know what? I I think I do want to change up my sculpting style when it comes to stone. So this was my third time being at Sculpture in the Park, but it had been a couple years since I had been there. In that time, I've been creating more content online and teaching people how to sculpt. And I had the experience of a few people coming up to me and say, saying like, oh, I'm familiar with your stuff online. And then showing them the sculptures, the stone sculptures that I'd brought to the show and kind of seeing a little bit of disappointment in their face and a couple of them saying, oh wow, this is not what I was expecting. So it seemed like when these people saw my work, they were just a little bit disappointed. And when I thought about it, I realized that they were right, they're right. So while I really do enjoy playing with these abstract forms and this kind of simplified, stylized way of approaching the figure, I realized that the main reason that I didn't tackle more realistic figures in stone was because of fear and laziness. And that's not a good thing. It's not good to be afraid. It's not good to be lazy. There's an interesting phenomenon where we're hypersensitive to mistakes when it comes to representational art. When you can tell that somebody was trying to make it look realistic, but you know, it's like most of the way there, but then there's a few things that are off. Those mistakes become very glaring and they really show through in the work. Whereas we're much more forgiving of stylized or abstracted or simplified figures. So it's almost better to do a simplification that only is 10% accurate to the figure because that will actually look better than a sculpture that's trying to be realistic and maybe that sculpture gets 90% of the way there, but then the 10% that's mistakes or that's off or that's asymmetrical, we focus on that and those mistakes become glaring. And so a good example of this is emojis. An emoji just conveys a simple emotion that's its purpose to say happy or angry. And it does the job really well. And it does this by removing all of the information, all of the visual information that's not essential to convey the message. So the fact that our head is not shaped like a circle that information isn't needed when you're trying to convey the emotion of anger. You don't need the actual shape of the head. You don't need the ears. You don't need the nose. You don't even need all of the parts of the eyes or the mouth. You just need, you know, the most essential parts and that's what's included in this emoji. So a simplification that is very effective at getting the message across really quickly. And I think that's why the majority of art throughout history is simplified or stylized or abstract, you could call it. It's not actually trying to represent things as they actually exist in nature or naturalistically. 
So in this way, an abstract sculpture that's only 10% true to reality, let's say that it just has like the basic gesture and some of the proportions of the figure, that can actually look better than an attempt at sculpting the figure naturalistically that is, let's say, 10% off. Because with the simplification, we're able to fill in the gaps and kind of understand it as a concept. Whereas with the representational art, everything has to feel right in our mind, the proportions, the symmetry, the weight and balance of the pose. And we are extremely good at things like facial recognition. So creating a masterful representative work of art is much, much more difficult than creating an attractive abstraction. So after I came to this realization, I started working on a new design for a new sculpture. This design right here, this female figure, and I was just sculpting this from imagination so I didn't have any references or anything. While I was just standing at my booth, I was working on it. When people would come and talk to me, I would talk to those people, just have it in hand, and then there's always kind of lulls between people walking by, and that's when I would just add a piece of clay here and there. And something that I liked about this design is that I was able to create it without using a wire armature that already had the proportions in place. This is what I generally recommend that students do is, is measure all the proportions ahead of time and have those in place in the armature. And that way you can just add clay onto the armature and you don't have to worry about the proportions. It's just an easier way to approach the figure. But as you get more experienced and you get familiar with those proportions, then you're able to invent figures and invent poses more from imagination. You train your eye to see the proportions a little bit better every time you sculpt a new sculpture. And I'm pretty happy with the proportions of this sculpture and how it turned out just up to this point. And so I have a piece of stone that I'm planning to use for this sculpture. I wanted to make this video just as a way of saying, you know what, I'm committing to changing my style in stone and doing some more difficult, more representational sculptures. I feel like I still might want to play with some of the abstractions like in my previous work so that there's some cohesion, something that ties it together. And I think the hair is a good way to play with those abstractions. And then in the figure, I really want to go for a more representational and naturalistic approach to the figure. So this video is me committing to that. Now, I recently did a video on sculpting the queen that was also kind of an abstract stylized sculpture and I did the process for that. So I'll try to include you guys on the process of sculpting this sculpture and how I work through some of the issues because I know it's gonna be more of a challenge. It's different than the style that I've usually done in stone. I'll probably need to incorporate some different techniques to be able to check myself a little bit more accurately throughout the process. I'm excited for it. I feel like it's a good move and it's a, it's something that I need to work on so that next year if I'm at the show again that I can have a few pieces where I feel like, you know what, these are more representative of the knowledge that I've tried to share and tried to gain as somebody that's interested in the figure, the human form. Now am I saying that abstract sculptures are inherently inferior to representative sculptures? Yes. That's what I'm saying, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that a representative sculpture is much more difficult to do, much more challenging, and shows much more expertise than even a well-done abstract sculpture. Now, people can still like abstract sculptures. That's fine. People can still buy them. In fact, I hope they still buy some of the abstract sculptures that I've done in the past, but I know that I want to create sculptures that I'm not embarrassed by. When you do something that you know is below your potential and you know that you should be trying to do more difficult things but you're just kind of nervous and you know maybe you'll be bad at it when you start and you know that it's not just like your style or because you like it but it's because you're just a little bit nervous to try something new and try something more difficult. Eventually you just got to stop making excuses and try to reach a little bit closer to that potential that we have. We all fall short of what we could be in some way or another, but we should keep trying to reach for that potential as artists, as people. Okay, I just wanted to get this out there, make that commitment openly in public to actual people watching this video. If you think you might like to learn how to sculpt people in clay, whether that's the full figure or the portrait 
or even hands specifically. There's courses on each of those topics in the description below. Those really help support me as a content creator, as an online instructor. Uh, that's how I make the majority of my income. So I really appreciate anybody that invests in those courses. I've tried to make them the best courses out there with the most information that I could fit into those courses. So I really hope that they'll help take your work to the next level. As usual, I hope you can stay creative and productive and I'll see you in the next video.